Here we're looking at the difference between futures and forwards. Okay. We spoke about exchange traded and over the counter. That's the biggest difference. All right. So you've got a summary here for the two, futures and forwards. Okay. When you look at the future, okay, versus the forward, the future is regulated and there's, a, there's an additional level of, let's say, peace of mind. Okay. And remember, when investing, your biggest risk is what? Not being able to receive your profit. Okay, so you make a nice profit, but you just can't get it. Okay, that's a problem. All right, so when looking at futures, futures offer that level of security because someone is going to meet that, let's say, obligation to pay in, in case someone is in a bad position or someone is in a good position. So the good position person should receive the profit. The position, the person in the bad position should be the one paying the profit. Okay, and they often talk about marked to market. Okay, and that's currents, uh, not currency, CFDs. Okay, so contracts, okay, derivatives are generally marked to market. Futures are marked to market. And what does that mean? It takes the person that's out of a profit and it compensates the person that's in profit. Right, and that happens day to day. So it creates liquidity in the market. So you never have a situation where someone has a big profit, okay, and someone is in a massive loss, so minus and plus. Okay, remember, if that person's up, that person's down for a future or a forward. Okay, so that's a contract in terms of a CFD. Okay, so when looking at contracts for difference, they go through product providers or brokers. Okay, and if you are, so we spoke about demo accounts and, and, and online trading that. So if you're considering brokers, you do need to look for brokers that have STP, which is straight through processing because there's no interference in terms of pricing. Okay, because some brokers do things a little bit, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, let's say dodgy. Okay, all right. So you don't want brokers that do things dodgy okay you want brokers that are regulated so if you're looking at cfd you want if it's the uk <coughs> fca approved okay uh, the, there's obviously regulation and then in the us there's also regulation there in terms of either security exchange okay or other right but you need to look for reg regulation right in terms of brokers right and if it's stp it's straight through that means the broker is not filling your order Okay, it's the bank that's filling the order, right? Because banks shouldn't go bankrupt, right? Because the broker acts as the intermediary for the intermediary, if that makes sense. So you're looking at the broker in terms of information. So you're using the broker to access products from a big commercial bank, and that's STP, right? And that's marked to market. So when you go through a broker, they mark to market your position. So every day you pay a certain fee or charge for your open positions because those positions are either in the money or out the money depending on your situation okay and what does that do that creates liquidity okay so when looking at futures the key word here is a clearinghouse all right so the JSC offers futures because the JSC is the clearinghouse all right the JSC will take from the one party and pay to the other party because the contract is between those two individuals. It's like, it's almost like, um, it's like someone controlling that, that transaction, if you will. Okay, it's like when you, I mean, think about playing Monopoly. Okay, maybe you played Monopoly when you were younger and um, you always have someone who's the banker. Okay, you don't have a player who's also the bank. I was a player who was the banker. <laughs> okay, so you might have been both. But if you were both, it was probably because there wasn't anyone else that was willing to, to be that. But generally, you'd want a, a separate party, okay, to manage the bank, okay, in terms of in terms of that transaction. So the JSC offers that in terms of a clearinghouse. The JSC, okay, the JSC is the clearinghouse that adds liquidity and peace of mind to those contracts that are promises to pay between two parties. One is the buyer, one is the seller. Okay, and all those contracts are standardized. 
Right, so there's a standard quantity in terms of quality. Right, so you don't have any contract on the JSC. Only contracts meeting certain requirements will be allowed to be listed on the JSC. Okay, it's like equity. You can't sell any share on the JSC. It must meet certain requirements. Same thing for contracts, and there's certain rules that need to be followed. Okay, and dates. And they, they always talk about like futures close. You might hear that quite often in the media. In the media. Okay, you, you normally hear those investment analysts, they talk about, oh, the market went up, why? Futures close. Okay, it's because people are closing their positions. Okay, either positions that are in profit or positions that are not in profit. So it could either increase or decrease the market. Sometimes there's a slight drop in the market because of positions being closed. It all depends. Okay, but futures close is also quite a important, let's say, not really news item, but uh, more time that there is added volatility, okay? And you don't obviously want volatility um, when you're in a particular position where you want it to either rise or fall. Okay, volatility is good because that gives you the opportunity to get in. But once you're in that position, okay, you don't want things like the futures closed to wipe out some of your profit, okay? You, you, wanna, you wanna keep things as consistent as possible while being in the position, okay? So, so volatility is good for getting in to certain positions. So as you said, the Brexit, um, Brexit was bad in terms of a drop, okay, and then obviously there's a massive decline in terms of this huge, huge negative uh, spike in terms of where price was to where price went to, and for a few days it continued to go short, All right, but now things have reversed, it's, it's come back, All right, and that's because of consensus okay, in the market and how certain people change their view right and normally things like that happen around futures close okay because big big um, institutions close their positions all right uh, forwards are over the counter what does that mean no, correct there's no peace of mind because no one is standing okay as safeguard between the buyer and the seller okay it's direct Okay, so that's a forward and they're custom made as well all right so even though there's no intermediary or clearing house okay there's still a market for those instruments because everyone wants an opportunity okay and we mentioned that earlier and performance okay is promised it's not guaranteed there's no guarantee with a forward and so it's it's riskier as well and because it's riskier it might be a cheaper option in the future perhaps okay not always but perhaps Futures might actually be cheaper because they're widely traded. So there's a bigger market. Okay, forwards aren't as popular, so less demand. Okay, maybe a specific supply, and that obviously changes the price. Okay, there's definitely a default risk. And what does default mean? Correct. Okay, no one meeting their obligation. Okay, so someone not doing what they were supposed to. Okay, and then not marked to market, i.e., there's no paying over our funds from one from one individual to another. Okay. All right. So, what is your view on derivatives? We've looked at it today. Okay, you, you've got a very a pretty good view now of the scope. So, what we're going to look at? Obviously, we're going to look at the numbers. How do we calculate certain things, etc., as we go through the course? But for now, what's your view? I like derivatives. Okay. Why do you like derivatives? So what opportunities do derivatives present? Well, they give you the opportunities you're not going to go and get in equities and bonds. Maybe you can go another way. <laughs> I don't think that explains it. Hedging. Like, yeah, yeah hedging. maybe. But it's also, I think, also what I, what I like about derivatives, personally, is people always say they're very complex. And I think it's, they are, but I think it's you need to understand it. Actually, yeah. That's my personal draw to that. Correct. So it's just... People mistake them for being very risky because they're complex. Yeah, and, and that's a good point you raise. So so people are afraid of things that they don't know. Yes. Okay, so I mean even when, when I first started in terms of like like markets and so on, all right, it's a bit intimidating in the first, but you always have that passion and that's what drives you towards that. And then you get the education and then you think, well, it wasn't so bad. Yes. And then it gets better because it's that fear initially. Right. So so I agree. Um, derivatives are complex. But they're complex in a sense in terms of calculation and also maybe understanding. Yeah. But if you understand those derivatives, 
they're actually very powerful. And that's why you've mentioned they're good. You've got a good positive view on them. Okay. What about this? What did Buffett say? Okay, this is a quote from Warren Buffett. Financial weapons of mass destruction that could harm the entire financial system. What do you think he was defining? Yes. Okay, so this definition was Buffett's view on derivatives. Okay, and we know Warren Buffett is a master of long-term value investing. Okay, that's, he is, like, the, um, yeah, the, what, what, yeah, the celebrity, the, the, the key in terms of um, long-term value investing. Right, so Buffett views derivatives as being weapons of mass destruction. Why do you think he says that? When did he say it? Before, I don't before know when... Yeah, I don't know when, okay, in terms of when he actually quoted this, but okay, okay. this is his quote. Okay, Buffett, yeah, Buffett has been quoted saying, financial weapons of mass destruction that could harm the entire financial system. Well, I mean, okay. I know they're not, they're not very... They are regulated, but they're not as regulated. Good. Um, okay. Dark, dark markets? Dark oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you're looking at those, like, fourth markets, yeah, fifth yeah, markets, yeah, yes, yeah. Okay, correct. So, that's definitely something to consider. So, in terms of regulation, yeah, definitely. And what else? Also, they have a very big say on our financial system, like equity, like bonds, are stable. They, they are okay, yeah, so we'll, we'll discuss how big the actual markets are. Yeah, they drive those markets. Okay, and what else? And when they crash, then you get the global financial crisis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. they have a very big say on our financial system, like equity, like bonds, are stable. Okay, and do you agree? What did we say a derivative is? It's just a... Contract. contract. It's a yeah. piece of paper for something Underneath it. underlying. Yeah. So, do those pieces of paper actually have any value? No. Okay, so for Buffett, all right, he would probably consider buying the actual asset rather than buying the derivative. So you can afford that. Okay. Asset. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. But, but I, I'm just. I'm just trying to deconstruct his quote in terms of why why we think he believes derivatives are weapons of mass destruction. So he doesn't trade in derivatives at all. Okay, he does have reinsurance. Reinsurance could be a form of derivative. Okay, so it's just a quote that he's mentioned in the past relating to derivatives. Okay, not to say he probably has considered options and. Uh, maybe forward and futures and, uh, and, and and those types of things. Okay, I don't know enough about yeah. his portfolio. Okay, in terms of his company, but what I do know in terms of the theory is that derivatives don't have any value. They derive value based on the underlying. Right. So for a derivative, okay, in terms of so let's just say let's say we had sufficient capital. Okay. Would we choose to invest in those shares rather than speculate? Probably. Okay, if you really want to buy equity, you would just buy equity. Okay, but if there was a chance, you could maybe speculate. Speculate. Okay, but also with speculation comes risk. Okay, so as much as you're speculating, it can or can't happen. All right, so the thing is, if you're happy to hold those assets for a long term, just buy those assets. It doesn't matter what happens. Right, so for example, what we know about Buffett is a long-term value investor. Right, so for him, derivatives are more short-term. Yeah. Okay, they're more, let's say, contracts with a specific period or time frame. Okay, Buffett's philosophy in terms of, if you read The Intelligent Investor, okay, um, Benjamin Graham's book, okay, in terms of value investing, that's exactly what Buffett does. Okay, Buffett is there to invest in shares that are undervalued and he's happy to hold them for 20 years 30 years forever basically because his company will last forever okay obviously he's the genius he's the guru okay but his company berkshire hathaway will last or survive long long after okay buffett obviously passes when he does okay all right so some statistics um, okay, this might be a little bit outdated. Okay, I, I don't have recent figures. Okay, we, I'll have to do some research to find them. But for now, let's just use these numbers. Okay, OTC derivative contracts. 2010 was short, uh, shortly after the crisis. Okay, we had the crisis 2008, very bad 
2008 year, then 2009 sort of like a spillover, and then things kind of got going 2010 onwards. Okay, so having said that, how big do you think the derivative contract market was in 2010? OTC. OTC is over the counter. We're, we're contrasting. Over the counter exchange traded. I actually think OTC. Are we talking value? Yes. Not okay. Yeah, value. So, how much in terms of RANDs? I would say OTC is bigger than exchange traded, to be honest. So, so, let's put in an amount. Uh, Billions too high. Okay, so, so go with the number. Uh, 50 million. 50 million for which? For OTC. Okay, and exchange traded? I would say 30 million. 30 million. I think it's smaller. Okay, so 30 million for exchange traded, yeah. OTC 50. 50 million. Okay. Oh, my word. Alright. In terms of US dollars, 601.1 trillion. Okay, and this was after we just had a crisis. Exactly, and they were blamed for this crisis. Okay, so in terms of rands or dollars, okay, this was obviously dollars. It's a lot bigger than rands. Okay, so a billion rand would wouldn't come close to 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 this. Okay, but it's a big big number. Okay, a trillion is how many zeros? No. Okay, so let's write this figure out. Six zero one one. Okay, now we need to add zeros. So that's where the trillion is. So a million is six. Nine zeros is a billion. Twelve zeros is a million. So we need to add. Uh, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. U S dollars. Okay. And that's how big the OTC derivative contract market was in 2010. And that's after a financial crisis. Okay. You were right in terms of OTC being higher than exchange traded. Okay. Why do you think it's higher? Customization. Correct. Okay. People want freedom to create contracts. People don't want to say, well, I want a contract, but it must be this. Okay. Generally, okay, people aren't, uh, rules generally, um, how can I say, limit, okay, um, creativity. Okay, so if you don't have rules in place, you have more room for creativity. And that's why OTC derivative contracts, they're creative. Because what did we say? You can do anything. It's custom. You can make a derivative for anything you like. But obviously exchange traded, certain derivatives won't be traded on an exchange because it won't meet the requirements. But OTC, well, anything goes in the OTC market. And that creates a very, very big risk. Have a look. It's almost 10 times the size of an exchange traded massive. derivatives market. That's massive. Yeah. 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 Derivatives are actually, as far as I know... Um, uh, no, I think Forex is bigger. probably bigger, but derivatives are probably close. Okay. All right. So, do you recall the 2007-2008 uh, crisis? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So now we can talk more about the swaps. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've we've spoken briefly about this in other in other modules, but now we can talk about this. What is this? This is a derivative. Okay, so what caused the crisis? Bad, lumping up mortgages. Bad products, yeah. Lumping up mortgages as what? Special purpose vehicles and yeah. selling mortgage Yes, okay, so it's a liability that's financing a liability. And then that liability financing another liability. Yes, good. And then the house, the, the cards crumble, okay, when the one liability defaults. Okay, then the house, the house of cards come tumbling down. Okay. Yes, and that was Lehman Brothers basically. Yeah. Right. They they literally like they made Lehman Brothers the the um yeah. It was scapegoat. Yes, exactly. Good. Okay. And then this. Have you seen the film yet? Yes, it's brilliant. Okay, good. It was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, if you didn't, I was going to play the trailer for you. Okay, to try get you to watch the film. Because the film is... Yes, it is a very good film in terms of... It's entertaining, it's a true story, uh, big Hollywood actors as well. And it's, it's recent. Okay, in SA, January 2016. Right. We were wondering... There are actually a couple of us at work that actually watched it. Okay, nice. We're thinking to ourselves, we wonder how much is true and how much we started to read up. They're pretty factual, actually. Yeah. The so book is probably more accurate. I haven't read that book. I'm not a fan of fiction. I'd rather watch the movie. But I'd, ra yeah. I'd rather read a textbook, to yeah. be honest, um, than, than a story. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd, I'd prefer, like, entertainment is great. So, like, watching a film is great. Yeah, okay. exactly. So, but yeah. Was, and when we started to read, they weren't far off, actually. So, so you've read the book as well? I haven't read the book. I just... Yeah, not not all of those characters were no, accurate. They, they were based on people yes. in real life. So yes. so the only name that was accurate was Mike Burry. That's okay. The other characters were were um how can I say portrayed on other individuals. That's yes. So the characters were not, but the storyline itself. The storyline was true. Was yeah. True. What happened was accurate. Yeah. And, um, yeah, uh, this guy. Yes. Uh, Gosling's character. That's it. Yeah. Um, this guy's the broker. Yeah, for I think it was City Bank or something he worked for. Yes. City or, or was it? I don't know. It was it was a big bank, That's US right. Bank. Yes, and they were so they were, uh, they were He was the broker. Yeah. It was just very interesting. Yeah, and then this guy, he was like a, a, a ex was, an ex Goldman trader or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he was crazy as well. Yeah, and then... The, was that man? Yeah. Um, Corral's character? Um, he was more like... He was almost like the conscience of yeah, the story. Yeah, Because he, he, he had like a moral... Because the thing is, he was in banking, yeah. and then he left, and then he was like a... Uh, he was fighting for the rights of consumers. Right. He was like an exactly. activist. Exactly. He was... He was the, the masses. Yeah. Almost. That's what reminded Yeah. And then you had... Obviously, Bale's character, and he was the actual um, uh, the, the foresight. He he saw the problem. Yeah. Okay, but very eccentric, eccentric character, and 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 but also very intelligent and and, and strange as well. Okay, but yeah. No, it was fantastic. It was very. Yeah, I actually I can't. I want to buy. I want to. It's one for the collection. So I want to. Yeah. Yeah. I read the book, but the movie I didn't enjoy. I was like, yeah, it, it was more Hollywood, um, what's like sex sells. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. that's sort of the take it, that they took. That's it. Yeah. It was like, but this movie, it was like, I know, because Tony and I watched it together, and I had to sit and, this movie actually had to sit and explain a couple of things to him. Yeah, because this, this show was actually educational as well. Yes. Because they broke, they broke down some of the concepts. Um, simply, that's it. and that it helped the audience as well. So anyone could have watched this. Even someone without a commerce background probably could get yeah, what was going on. There was some of the technique. I know it's only supposed to be some of the terms are a bit far. Sure. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's fine. Two seconds to explain it. Nice. Okay. Good. Okay. Great. And then a note here about transparency and regulatory oversight. Okay. So what should we be looking at? Is transparency a good thing? Yes and no. Okay, when you say yes, why do you say yes? Because transparency give, transparency allows you to have regulation, if that makes sense. So if a transparent market, you're not going to have, then you're going to lose your profits, and you're going to lose your, you know, so, you want to be transparent, you want to, to above board, etc. Then you lose the, the customization, you lose the Yes. You lose the profit, you lose the arbitrage. Much people say there isn't it does exist. Okay. So do you agree if everything is transparent, okay, will certain companies have a competitive advantage? No. Because, no, the because there are certain trade secrets. Exactly. Okay, so you can be transparent to some extent. But at some point in time, companies need to be protective over their, right, their okay, their, they their goodwill, okay, that 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 intellectual capital and so on. All right, so 
when looking at transparency, as much as we want banks to be transparent, can they? Between you and them, yes, but I think between what they do and behind the scenes. Okay, so who do banks have to be transparent with? Their customers. With their customers' money, essentially. If that makes sense. If I give the bank 100 grand and I tell them to put in a fixed deposit, yes. I know he's going to take it and okay. do something else with it. But I don't expect my hundred grand at the end of that. Yeah, okay, that, that's more responsibility in terms of they're responsible to return yes. the capital, but sure. They do not have to disclose to me what they do with my hundred grand for the next six years or however long I invested. Okay, yes, correct. So there's no transparency there, or not as much transparency. Uh, so where do you have transparency? What who do banks have to be transparent with? Yes, okay, Reserve Bank, yeah, i.e. regulators. Yeah. Okay, so transparency. You can't get away from government in terms of regulation. All right, so for banks, transparency is key for the regulators. All right, and that's why when you have an exchange, even those exchanges are regulated. So transparency should be present between the regulator and the bank. Okay. For the client, there isn't as much transparency because the client is external to that regulation, right, between government and the banks. Okay, so if we didn't have good policies in place, so if we didn't have FICA, if we didn't have FaZe, if we didn't have uh, POCA and all those acts that protect the industry, okay, the industry could be very different. Right, and we've seen that in the big short. Right, the industry is uh, run or is um, motivated by greed, unfortunately. Okay, but greed shouldn't be why we do things. Right, it should be because of the value that you're creating. Right, so if, if banks act in terms of their value, what is their value? Their value is to provide a service to facilitate transactions in the economy. Okay, it, it shouldn't be about making as much profit as possible right and when that changes so in the past banks should be focused on values creating a, uh, a product in terms of a service being an intermediary okay in terms of rate making a profit that shouldn't be the focus and that was the focus in 2008 which was a problem okay so derivatives can be privately negotiated does that provide transparency no Okay, if it's traded on exchange, that does provide transparency. So if we're looking at transparency and regulatory oversight, those are some of the examples that you would look at in terms of access okay, to these products that are regulated, that are quality. Okay, so the example I'm going to make is you don't buy groceries from anywhere. Okay, you buy groceries from a retailer that you trust. Okay, you're not going to buy groceries from anyone, all right, because you don't trust the quality of those goods. And that's what we're looking at here. So the JSE has the SAFEX. Okay, SAFEX is the equity derivatives market. Okay, you obviously get other markets in terms of bonds. Okay, you get bonds in terms of bond market and, and so on. If we're just looking at derivatives in terms of equity, that would be the futures. Okay. Here's the London okay, International Financial Futures Exchange, and then you've got the CME, okay, which is the Chicago Board of Trade. Okay, and those are some of the names uh, that they've actually spoken about in the textbook. Okay, because it's an international textbook, it's a CFA prescribed textbook, so the focus is going to be more from a US point of view because the CFA is a US qualification. All right, so the type of questions that you'll see, or not questions, the type of examples you'll see in the textbook are very much focused on the on America. Okay, and you would have seen the same thing in the bond yes. textbook and the same thing in equity. Okay, don't worry too much about that. Just focus more on the Africa and focus more on the calculations and the theory. Okay, because the theory is universal and the calculations are universal. Whether it's JSE, SAFEX, or whether it's US CME group, it's not going to make a difference. It's just a different market. That's it. Okay. All right, Tanya, and that's the end for today.